I came across a sad and interesting case today from the federal court in Nevada that made me want to tell you about it. It's called Genworth Life and Annuity Insurance Company versus Amber Hunt. And it's about a dispute between an ex-wife and an adult son uh, arguing about who should get the million dollar life insurance policy left behind by her ex-husband and his father when he died. When naming beneficiaries to life insurance policies, there are three mistakes that are the most common ones I see clients make. Now this case is a good one for talking about two of them. So keep watching and I'll tell you about the case and how to avoid making three of the most common mistakes people make when naming life insurance beneficiaries. <music> Greg Gordillo, and I've been a lawyer for more than 25 years. I'm here to give you tips and insight into how to use the law to keep your family and everyone you care about out of court and out of conflict if something should happen to you. So if that interests you, well, consider subscribing. Investing in life insurance is a foundational part of estate planning, but when naming your policy's beneficiaries, there are a number of mistakes you can make that could lead to potentially dire consequences for the very people you're trying to protect and support. Sadly, that's what happened when Jared Hunt died because he made one of the three mistakes before he died. And his sad story also shows how another of the big bad three can leave your family locked in a courtroom while grieving your loss. So if you want all the sad details, I'll post below in the description a link to the full court opinion. And if you read it, let me know what you think by leaving your thoughts or questions in the comments. Oh, and as a sneak preview, stick around to the end for a bonus tip and to learn how to get my free report on how much should an estate plan cost. In Genworth Annuity versus Amber Hunt, Jared Hunt bought a life insurance policy in 2003. He named his wife Amber as the sole primary beneficiary. So if she was alive when Jared died, she would get all the insurance benefits. Jared also named his adult son from a prior marriage, who was also named Jared, as the contingent beneficiary. So if Amber were not alive when Jared the father died, the life insurance benefits would have gone to the son, Jared. Now this was neither unusual nor in any way a mistake in naming beneficiaries, but it does highlight the first common mistake others make. Number one, failing to name a beneficiary. Although it would seem like common sense, whether intentional or not, far too many people fail to name any beneficiary at all. Others make the mistake of naming a, um, a beneficiary as, quote, my estate, unquote, rather than listing a specific person. Now, either way, both of these errors will mean your insurance proceeds have to go through the court process, known as probate, during probate. A judge will determine who gets your insurance death benefits. And this process can tie the benefits up in court for months or even years, depending on who the beneficiaries of your estate are under the law. Now, furthermore, probate opens up the proceeds for, to creditors, which can seriously deplete or even totally wipe out the funds. Now, to prevent this, make certain you name at the very least one primary beneficiary. And in case your primary beneficiary dies before you, you should also name a contingent or an alternate beneficiary. For maximum protection, name more than one contingent beneficiary in case both your primary and secondary choices die before you. But back to the Hunt family story. Eight years after Jared bought his life insurance policy, he and Amber got divorced. And during the eight years, Amber and Jared had two children. Jada and Jeremy. Five years after the divorce, Jared died. Now, unfortunately, before Jared died, he made the second kind of common mistake I see regarding life insurance beneficiaries. Jared failed to keep his beneficiaries updated. And while failing to name any beneficiary at all is a huge mistake, not keeping your beneficiary designations up to date can be even worse. Now, this is particularly true if you're in a second marriage and, like Jared did, fail to remove an ex-spouse as a beneficiary. Now, this can leave your current spouse with nothing when you die. Or, in Jared's case, the possibility existed that it would leave his children with nothing. In fact, 
That's why his adult son, Jared, created the controversy leading to the lawsuit. When the father died, the son and his ex-wife, Amber, both contacted the insurance company to claim the million dollar benefit. Sadly, and not surprisingly, when the father passed away, he unintentionally left his family in conflict and in court. Now, to prevent this from happening to your family, you should review your beneficiary designations at least annually as part of an overall review of your estate plan and immediately update your beneficiaries upon events like well, divorce, deaths, and births. When you're a client of ours, we have built-in systems to ensure your beneficiary designations, along with all the documents in your estate plan, are regularly reviewed and updated. Fortunately for the Hunt family, Amber and Jared's adult son reached a settlement, but that didn't fully resolve the matter. The million dollars still wasn't paid to them even though they reached an agreement. Amber and Jared, the son, they agreed to split the full benefits equally among Amber, the son Jared, and the two children, Jada and Jeremy. Now here's where the court comes in. Because Jada and Jeremy were minor children, the settlement could not be finalized until the court gave its approval. Their mother, Amber, she wasn't allowed under the law to make the settlement without the court's approval. And although Jared didn't make this mistake, that is the father, it's the third common one I see people make when, they, when naming life insurance beneficiaries. Naming a minor as a beneficiary. And though you're technically allowed to name a minor child as a beneficiary, it's never a good idea. The court eventually approved the settlement that Amber and Jared's son reached, and the insurance company paid out the million dollar policy but it took 16 months after Jared died before the money was paid. And that was pretty fast for a dispute like the one the Hunt family had. If Jared, the father, had named his minor children as beneficiaries, it would have been even worse. Minor children can't receive insurance benefits until they reach the age of majority. In some states, that's as old as age 21. Now, if a minor is listed as the beneficiary, the proceeds of your insurance will be distributed to a court-appointed custodian who will then be in charge of managing the funds, often for a fee, until the children reach the age of majority, at which point all the benefits are distributed to them outright. Now, this is true even if the minor has a living parent. A child's living parent could petition the court to be appointed custodian, but there's no guarantee that a parent would be appointed the custodian, especially if the parent can't qualify or pay for a bond. In many cases, a court can deem a parent unsuitable if they have poor credit, for example, and instead of appointing the parent as the custodian, the court appoints a paid fiduciary to control the funds. When parents want to make sure that their minor children will receive life insurance benefits immediately, rather than naming a minor as a beneficiary, you can set up a trust to receive the insurance proceeds and name a trustee to hold and distribute the funds to the minor child as you would want them to benefit from the, the proceeds. Now by doing so, you get to choose not only um, who would manage your child's money, but also how and when the funds are distributed and used. Now, I know I mentioned the three big bad mistakes most commonly made when naming life insurance policy beneficiaries, but here's a bonus mistake to avoid. Naming an individual with special needs as a beneficiary. Although a loved one with special needs is likely one of the first people you'd think of naming as a beneficiary of your life insurance policy, doing so can have tragic consequences. If you leave the money directly to someone with special needs, it could disqualify that individual from receiving much needed government benefits. Rather than naming someone with special needs as a beneficiary, you should create what's called a special needs trust. The Special Needs Trust then receives the insurance proceeds. This way, the money won't go directly to the beneficiary upon your death, but it would be managed by the trustee you name and dispersed according to the trust's terms without affecting benefit eligibility. The rules governing Special Needs Trusts, well, they're pretty complicated and they vary from state to state. So if you have a child with special needs, meet with us today to discuss your options. In the end, Special needs planning involves a lot more than just life insurance. It's about providing for a lifetime of care and protection.
While naming life insurance beneficiaries might seem like a simple task, if you're not careful, you can create major problems for the loved ones you're trying to benefit. If you've made any of these errors, contact us right away so we can amend your policy to ensure that its proceeds provide the maximum benefit for the ones that you love most. We can also support you putting in place planning tools like trusts, special needs or otherwise, to ensure that the proceeds provide the maximum benefit for your beneficiaries without negatively affecting them in any way. Our contact information is in the description below. So let us know if we can help. Now as promised, if you'd like more information about how much should an estate plan cost, click on the link below and you can get your copy of my free report now. And if you got value from this video, Hit the thumbs up button for us.